This video is really just laughing at someone that's really transphobic and really dumb. Kaylee Campbell. In my personal opinion, I think that she's probably just really dumb. She's really dumb. Hi, everybody. So yeah, we're gonna be talking about transgenderism today. Um, it's gonna be very interesting. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Give me one second really quick. Gotta open something. Okay, um, you're good. Sweet. Hello, what's up? So, okay, so I'm curious. How did you find my TikTok account? Um, How did I find your TikTok account? I think I was just recommended a video on my For You page. Do you remember which one it was? Um, I think it was the where you were like bragging about uh, kicking the guy out for uh, being pro-choice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, which is funny because... I know in the YouTube video, you said it never really happened, but yeah. unfortunately it did happen. I, I understand that. So, um, I mean, the, the way you made it seem, I mean, also for the memes, I got to like say that it's not real. Um, but, um, I mean, it, it seems fairly believable, uh, it, it, not kicking him directly out and letting him move out. I mean, you, it's like a 10 second TikTok video. You can't exactly add all the context, but no, right. that, that is the one that I, I think, I believe I found you on. With the with the debate topics, um, yeah. I do want to ask you something before we start yeah. on a basic, just a basis of um, why you believe things and like where your morals come from um, in like a general sense. So I'll yeah. start with like myself. So for me personally, the things I believe, the policies I believe in, um, wh whatever I push online or in person, the reason I do it and the reason I believe it is because I believe it makes people um, happier, like it increases human happiness overall and by that i mean i think it makes the average person's life better and uh, so that's basically why i believe stuff and i think that people can both believe that and still have completely different opinions because they don't agree on what makes people happier but i want to ask if at least uh your basis of why you do things or believe things are to increase human happiness i guess yeah so i mean that's basically our same goal we genuinely care about other people. I know that there's a lot of conservatives out there who don't push that agenda and it doesn't look like they care, but there's also a lot of leftists out there who straight up seem really selfish and stuff. But overall, we're looking out for the goodness of others and trying to help other people make the right decisions for the best of their own like benefit. My morality derives from my personal religion, which would be Christianity. And <clears throat> I believe that those morals and values are placed here for us to live good lives, help other people be happy and help people live to the fullest extent and to the best of their ability. So I just want to make sure. So your, your morals and beliefs aren't just because like God said so, but you believe God said so because it makes people happier. Cause I mean, there are some people who will go with the religious route, basically just say I know it might like make people's lives worse, but um, God said so. And God is like the almighty power. So he's just right. Um, so you at least believe that these, these, the, the rules put by your certain um, belief in God or the rules that you believe God has are to make people happier and not just because God said so. Well, I, yes. Number one, to answer your question Two, I don't want to take the religious route on this just okay. because there's a lot. Of I just other... want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I didn't want to bring religion into it at all. Yeah, um, for my as, own as personal sense. life, but analyzing like society as a whole, mm -hmm. there's other factors that come into play with that, which is easier to d debate and discuss. Um, do you want to start with um, basically on what the defin what um like what is a woman and what you like what your definition of a woman is and why you believe it? Do you want to start with that one? What is a woman? Hmm. Yeah. So the definition of a woman, since I am one, is a human human being that has XX chromosomes and they can biologically produce children. Um, they have the female reproductive organs and they have all the reproductive stuff that a woman has. Like women, it's it's simple. The XX chromosomes is the basis. So essentially what you're saying is uh in simple terms is you believe a woman is a human female well i believe that there's male 
which is okay. XY, and female, which is XX. So no, on so I, I just want to put put it down that I understand there's a difference between female and male, um, right. and I, I separate it from gender. But your your definition of a woman is essentially a human female. Like that's that's not like a trap or anything. I'm just like yeah. The, it's, I mean, it, to 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 dumb it down to the simplest okay. aspect of it, yeah. And then, what is your reason for believing that? Well, I am a female, um, so I would like to think that I know what a woman is. It's just what we are. It's what we were created as. It's what we're born as. So, like, uh, argument of that's how it's been, so that's how it should be, kind of? Or well, like, not necessarily that's how it's been, so that's how it should be. That's just what it is, as science says it is. So, I'll, I'll start with my definition. So, okay. my basic definition is... Um, my, my simple definition is a woman is someone who identifies as a woman. Now, the argument that people often say is that that's circular and that you can't have a circular definition. What is a woman? The answer you should be able to provide is what exactly is a woman? Well, it's, it, for me, it's, it's actually a really simple answer and that's a person who identifies as a woman. Well, I don't fully disagree that you can't have a circular definition because I believe that identities are um, by definition, kind of a circular definition. Um, but if you don't want a circular definition, my more complex definition would be someone who identifies with the roles and expectations commonly associated with the female sex. But what are they identifying as? As a woman. As but, a but what is that? As a woman. Do you know what a circular definition is? I do. It's sort of like what you're doing right now, where a woman is, is a woman. So that would be my longer term, which essentially boils down to um, a woman is someone who identifies as a woman. Now, the reason that I believe that my definition is the correct one and the one that should be used is basically I believe it has more utility to humans. Um, so my main reason for utility, so I have the side reasons of utility. I think it's, um, it's simpler that way because you don't have to go into all the... Um, specific things there's there's intersex people there's um there's gray areas and you don't have to go and like parse out all those gray areas that doesn't really make sense in a social sense um so i believe it has that utility too um but my main reason that i believe it has more utility is back to where i started was i think it increases um human happiness i think it makes the average person happier specifically i believe that it makes trans people's lives better while not negatively affecting other people. Um, basically, an undeniable thing is that gender dysphoria is a real thing. Whether you believe in trans women or not, um, the idea that gender dysphoria, that people have um, the, the, the mental effects of basically where they don't feel comfortable in their own, um, in their own body, they um, want to be the opposite um, sex, where they don't feel comfortable with their assigned sex. Like gender dysphoria is a real thing. You at least like under, like admit that that, that that's a real mental uh, uh, a real mental thing that happens to people. Gender dysphoria, a mental illness. Um, yeah, I think it's classified as a mental illness. If it is, I'm not 100 percent sure. If it is, then yeah, that that's that's totally cool. I don't have any. The reason I didn't say mental illness is because it wasn't 100 percent sure. Um, I, I'll trust you on whether it's classified as a mental illness or not. Um, yeah. Um. So it's distressing people and acceptance is making them less distressed and less likely to self-harm and hurt themselves. So I'd argue that my definition is better simply because it doesn't kill as many people. So what would you tell the 41% of all people that identify as trans who tried to kill themselves? What would you tell them? So I, I think, yeah, the, the stats range between like 40 to like 50% normally on like depends on the study basically. Um, so yeah. If you're trans, you're a lot more likely to commit suicide and attempt suicide. But I would argue that that's because of how we treat trans people. Accepting a trans person will lower their suicide rates. It's basically you're going to a person and you're telling them um, you're not normal, you're bad, and you shouldn't accept yourself and then wondering why they commit suicide more often. So I would say it's simply a fact of we don't treat them well, so they're more likely to commit suicide. I I would disagree just because I know that the narrative right now is that the left is saying that the right is just doing nothing but bullying trans people into killing themselves. That's the number one argument that I hear all the time, which I would have to disagree with. I don't think it has to do with us not accepting them into society and it has more to do with their placement in society because right now looking at what the movement is trying to do is anything from 
wanting men in women's bathrooms, wanting children to learn about this stuff in schools, wanting it to be more normalized in TV shows, things like that. And I've said from day one, if you have to normalize something, it wasn't normal to begin with. To bring back to the whole, it makes people happier, I don't think, and I mean, according to this 41%, and this was this was found by the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. No, no I, can I, send I agree you, with your stats. I'm not, I'm not yeah, disagreeing with your stats. Yeah, I, I do want to see yours, so you can send those to me. Yeah. Uh, but that's already 25 times higher than the national average of suicide, and that's only specifically focusing on transgenders in America. I don't think that their lifestyle makes them happier just because one family member accepted them into society. There's either the scientific path that we can go first, or we can go more of like the social path of how it's affecting society. So uh, I don't know which one you like to focus on. I mean, you, you did just bring up the stats thing. I'll just respond to that. So, I mean, yes, trans people are more likely to commit suicide, but I did, as I showed be before, that um accepting them drastically reduces that it doesn't reduce it to um baseline levels because there's still people who don't accept them but accepting them reduces the suicide rates um suicide attempt rates because you can't really study suicide rates because they're dead as well but suicide attempt rates go down based on acceptance and they go up based on families who are hostile towards them so i mean it kind of shows that the 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 suicide being so high is because they aren't treated well. The it's argument, not like you, yeah. I mean, th that's a good point. The argument behind that, though, could be made about anything. If I'm, if I think a certain way and I go surround myself with people who also think a certain way on anything, whether it's transgenderism or like, I don't know, a favorite color or a favorite food. If you go surround yourself with people who view and see things the way that you do, they're going to essentially be put in this like ideology and mindset that it's okay because they have people around them telling it that it's okay but that doesn't make it okay in society so you, you so you're basically saying that having people that accept you will make you less likely to attempt suicide but you're saying it shouldn't matter because it's not okay why isn't it okay why is it not okay what what makes it wrong it's giving like a false narrative of comfort. If I, if you kill somebody and I tell you, oh, hey, it's okay. Like that doesn't make it okay. Like you can have the comfort and reassurance from anybody around you. But at the end of the day, just because somebody told you something's okay, doesn't make it okay. Killing someone, you're directly hurting someone else. Being trans, you're only living how you want to be. You're only affecting yourself you're only choosing your own life. You're not affecting anyone else negatively. Well, it would hurt my children if I was walking on the street and I walked past some six, five man wearing a dress. And it would also hurt me if I walked into the bathroom and I got raped by some guy who put on a dress in the bathroom, which is a, is a big concern that has happened in the past is that a lot of the whole going back to 2016 when Obama decided to allow men and women to go into whichever bathroom that they wanted to, that's been a thing since then and there have been a lot of cases where men have snuck into women's bathrooms due to them identifying as women and then assaulting raping or attacking women for no reason first of all uh, a, a child seeing a man in a dress isn't harming the child it is harming the child as a woman do you think there's something like stopping a guy so a guy that's going to rape someone he's already committing a crime that is like can be life in prison like so he's already committing a massive crime i don't think he's gonna care about the extra fine that um is walking into a woman's bathroom if he is a guy couldn't we use that same argument on a completely unrelated topic of gun control just saying if that's like the if that's the mindset that we're going with and the logic that we're going to use in this argument couldn't we literally say that you know Bad people are going to get the guns either way, so why make gun control? Um, That's just so, like the 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 logic that I've seen behind a lot of these arguments that I feel like people from the left pick and choose which whenever they want to use. So them. hypothetically, in a fairy world, we could have a world where we just remove all guns from America. I think that that would be a good thing um, because then you wouldn't need guns to defend yourself from guns. Um, but we don't live in that world. We have infinite amount of guns in America. We're not getting rid of them. Right. So um, for specifically guns, 
I think that the main thing for guns is that um, the, ma the main issue with guns is people uh, killing themselves. Um, it makes it easier to kill yourself, and it also makes it um, you're able to kill a lot of people more quickly is the main issue with guns. And stuff like I think background checks are fair, um, but I'm not I'm not like someone that thinks that ban you should ban guns. But um, I do think that the difference is that you have the the gun makes it so you can do harm a lot easier, while um, a bathroom door is there is a, there's not much keeping there's not much um, stopping someone from committing a sexual assault that's just a simple bathroom door while a gun like having an ar if compared to a knife you can kill 50 people in uh, a minute rather than like three people in a minute with a knife so i do think that those are different arguments even though i'm not necessarily um directly anti-gun right okay so with the bathroom door situation like you said if somebody's gonna rape somebody they're gonna do it regardless um but encouraging it slash allowing it and being like you know what right now it's in agreement that who's men allowed have rape. one bathroom what who's allowed rape though like no one's allowed rape i'm not saying allowed rape. i okay. meant like when we were talking about the scenario of a man going in there regardless um mm -hmm. whether it was a man or a trans man or whatever with that logic we're basically saying you know right now Men go in one bathroom, women go in the other bathroom, and that's how it is. Now we're like, you know what? You guys can go into whichever bathroom you want, whatever. It's kind of just knowing the consequences of what's going to happen if we're like, you know what? Yeah, if you're a guy, go in a girl's bathroom, whatever. Knowing the consequences of what's going to happen if men enter women's bathrooms and then being like, well, we're just doing it to make other people happy. Like we know that somebody's probably going to go in there and, and rape somebody, but now we're making it easier for them. And I don't think that benefits your logic of making the world a happier place. Um, so specifically with the men who you're saying are pretending to be women or even trans women, what, I think that you can be both be a trans woman or a man pretending to be a woman to get into a bathroom. I think both those things are plausible. Um, so there's been like, almost no cases of that. Rewinding back to, I wanted to read you this from the American College of Pediatricians All right. um, talking about how this is considered child abuse because I, my main focus on the whole transgender issue is it being pushed on children, which is like one of the niche things that I like to talk about when it comes to this. And so this says conditioning children into believing that a lifetime of chemical and surgical imp impersonation of the opposite sex is normal and healthful is child abuse. Endorsing gender dis discordance as normal via public education and legal policies will confuse children and parents, leading more children to present themselves to gender clinics where they will be given puberty blocking drugs. This in turn virtually ensures that they will choose a lifetime of carcinogenic and otherwise toxic cross sex hormones and likely consider unnecessary surgical mutilation of their healthy body parts as young adults. But overall, can, can we agree that encouraging encouraging young children to like what what side are you on when it comes to encouraging children which is like what 13 and below to mutilate themselves based on what they think they are at a young age because so, i can tell you when i was young i i wasn't like the girly girl type i'm not really the girly girl type now but i definitely was not the girly girl type back then if my parents had changed me to a boy based on the sports that I played or the, the toys that I played with, I would probably hate my life now. Um, so the thing is like nowhere in America are, are children getting like genital mutilation or like what you say, genital That's mutilation. True. That's not true. Their bottom surgery is not a thing. Maybe like a few cases with a 17 year old, but a third there's find me a case where a 13 year old is getting bottom surgery. And, right now, um, right now in Texas, Jeff Younger, who just ran for state representative, his ex-wife took their son. He's eight years old, and she's currently trying to transition him into a girl because she full-heartedly believes that 
this eight-year-old child is a girl, even when the child himself is like, I'm not a girl. And so I'm not talking about the morals. The I'm not talking about the morals here. Um, it is is the, the has that eight-year-old had bottom surgery? Have they changed the genitals of that eight-year-old? They are because they no are doctor would trying to do that. No doctor would because you literally can't. There's like actual like you you it's you physically don't have enough penis material to make a vagina. It is literally impossible to do it. So the, the there's there's no way that they're making an eight-year-old like bottom surgery. And beyond that, um, we have really stringent restrictions for um, getting hormone treatment, and hormone treatment normally doesn't start until later. I don't personally, I, I don't think that children should be getting bottom surgery. I don't think that young teens or children should be getting hormone replacement uh, treatment. Um, I do think that they um, can get puberty blockers because puberty blockers simply delay puberty. Um, there, there is some cases where they do, the, the only effects from puberty block blockers are they have slight effects on height. Like they can like maybe take an inch off if you're a guy, um, if you're like a male, um, or they can um, delay bone density growth. So you're eventually when you get older, you'll be have like full bone density, but that you'll it'll go a little bit into adulthood before you have full bone density. So puberty blockers don't have any um, other long term effects and they're fully reversible. So I think that puberty blockers are fine, which lets kids um, have more time to mentally mature before they decide whether they want to um, get hormone treatment or not. So I, I, I don't think that you should be giving children hormone treatment or general reassignment surgery, but I don't think that's happening either. That's the narrative that us on the right, the conservatives are seeing being pushed from the left. That's why we get so passionate about these topics because that's that's quite literally what the agenda is that's being pushed right now is it, that they want children to be able to transition as young as eight, seven, six, five years old. And I know maybe that's more on the extreme left side, but things like that, if we can both sit here and agree that that's not OK, then why aren't we doing anything to stop it? But even if you look at the Democrats, I'm, I'm not a Democrat myself, but if you look at the Democrats, not a single Democrat is saying that you should um, have children get reassignment surgery for uh, like uh, bottom surgery or, or top surgery. Um, and I don't think there's many legitimate um, credible leftists that are either saying that um, too, that you should, you should be able to what you're saying, general, generally mutilate children. Um, I don't think anyone's saying that you might be able to find a few edge cases, but that is not the majority. That is not the mainstream. Those are like people that are what I would be considered counterproductive and harmful. But I don't think I, not, I don't think I know that that is not a um, mainstream push to have that happen. If it was legitimately if there was a legitimate mainstream push to happen, if there was legislation that allowed that, I would be against that legislation. But there isn't. So I want to ask you something about, so would you consider yourself a feminist? Um, yeah. Okay. That means that you are for women's rights. You want women to have control over their bodies. You believe women can have empowerment and be, you know, boss bitches and all of that kind of stuff. Right. And well, would you consider yourself a feminist? No. Okay. Yeah. So yes, I would consider So your arguments so are about feminists, but you're not a feminist just, just to like. Yeah, well, because I want to I want to see your your perspective on this. So if feminism is defined as women being women and women feeling empowered by being proud that they are women, then why is it OK? Or maybe you disagree um, that we allow men to be trans women to come in and one, take over women's sports um, 
want to claim I, I guess I can't wrap my head around why a man would go want to claim to be a woman and then like it just it, it invalidates the feminist movement for me because at the end of the day we're kind of just like warping manhood and womanhood to one unisex type world where anybody can identify as anything and it's kind of ripping away everything that it would be because I would I would I would call myself a traditional feminist based on the first wave of feminism but after that when things started getting out of control and they kept wanting more and more and more now it's come to a point where men can be women and there's nothing left special about being a woman the 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 trans athletes thing is a separate topic that we can get into later but specifically going on the um trans women destroying womanhood so the reason that i think that's ridiculous is um because you can be a woman uh, a, a cis woman and a trans woman they're both women they are different types of women but at the same time they can both be women while not invalidating the other person's womanhood if your womanhood is based on exclusion, I feel like you're really not, a, don't have a strong belief in the power of your womanhood. While a trans woman currently, I don't know, science might advance, can't give birth, that doesn't make them not a woman. You still have that thing, like if you care very much about giving birth, then you have that still. And a trans woman being a woman doesn't take that away from you. So wh well, why would um, and so I'm I'm I consider myself a libertarian um, in the sense of I believe in maximizing people's freedom. Um, so I think that people should be able to do what they want. So that's why I don't think the argument of um, you're degrading like a standard and like by letting trans women be women is is legitimate because I think that. Um, whatever a standard is doesn't matter as that standard is making people's uh lives worse specifically trans people's lives worse but no why why is a trans woman also being a woman make a cis woman less of a woman okay so rewind back to when you said it shouldn't be based on exclusion which if a trans woman and a cis woman want to identify as the same thing it's quite literally taking away what a normal woman can do which is give birth have a period be able to breastfeed like there are things that women as i am a woman able to do as a woman that you cannot do as a man so now, uh with with that so specifically i mean yeah the there there's stuff that a cis woman can do that a trans woman cannot do and a trans woman being a woman does not take away magically take away your ability to give birth. So that you're, doesn't you're make it, them a woman, though. There's we can rewind back to what a woman is, which is somebody with XX chromosomes who's able to give birth, grow babies inside of them. That is a woman, and the trans okay, woman over people? here cannot physically give birth, cannot physically create milk to nurture their child, cannot have a period. So that what, is not the same thing. What about women on menopause? What about women who are infertile? What about women who, um, I'm talking about cis women, who um, are intersex, where I, I don't exactly, I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm not a biologist. So I'm not a biologist. Of... But there are women who can have an XX chromosome and a, uh, a, a Y chromosome too, or along those lines where they don't have that exact XX chromosome, but we still consider them a cis woman because that's how biology works. The thing is, the, the definition of a woman, there is a, we, we decide what a woman is based on what's useful to us. And no. there's no, you don't, you don't think that we decide that words, you don't think words are for our use? What, what, what are words for? What's the purpose of words? We don't decide what a woman is based on usefulness. Yeah, we do. We, every word is based on the usefulness of that word. Right. We make but... words to be useful to us. Yes, but a woman is a biological term. There are things that make you and I different. Just because I wake up tomorrow and I'm like, I'm a man, does not make me a man. I agree. All. And there's also things that make brunettes and blondes different. So, I mean, like, exactly. there's things, there's, but they're still both women. Right. But we're talking about reproductive organs that are inside of your body. And your entire body is 
created completely differently based on biology and based on science, science that is so heavily backed up until it doesn't agree with the narrative of an argument and biological sex as a whole cannot change regardless if I somebody takes a penis, turns it inside out. We're, and makes we're not it talking about better. biological sex though. We're talking about gender. I mean, if you're talking about science, currently pretty much every scientific institution, specifically medical and uh, mental health institutions, they all agree that trans women are women and that, that, that trans women exist, trans men exist. They all agree with that statement. So if you're going to like the authority of science, then you, you would lose on that. But, but we're going to on the authority of how somebody feels. If I wake up tomorrow and I want to identify as a brunette, does that make me brunette? No, but exactly, if you, exactly. If, okay, but that's because th I'm not talking about whether you can identify as something. My, my simple definition is a woman is someone who identifies as a woman. The thing is, a brunette is not an identity. Gender is an identity. It's what I look like. It's not, an, you don't identify as, well, you can identify as a brunette. You can be like a brunette and like not identify as a brunette and it's like non-important factor in your life. But the it, it is something that is based on brown hair or blonde hair. Now, right. brunette, and gender the thing, is based on now, no, female listen, reproductive before, organs. Let me finish on that really quick. So what if, so gender and sex are two different words for a reason. Why should we use them the same when there's other utilities that are more useful of not using it in the way that you want it to be used? Well, because why, we why? don't get to take words and just change them around to mean whatever we want to mean. Um, yeah, you can totally change words when um, a word you no longer becomes- words. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay. Pluto. Pluto used to be a planet. Pluto, Pluto used to be defined as a planet, but I think in 2006 or 2008, they found out that there's a bunch of dwarf planets, planets that are like Pluto, um, that have the same, that are almost exactly like Pluto, that exist way beyond the other planets like Pluto does, um, and there's hundreds of them. So the definition of planet, Pluto being defined as a planet would no longer be useful to us. That doesn't so change in, the in meaning of the word. In 2006, we the changed planet. the definition. We changed the definition of a planet to exclude Pluto because the definition no longer had the usefulness that it did before we found out about the bunch of other dwarf planets that are like Pluto. So that's but a that hard science. that doesn't change what it is. That doesn't change the yes, definition. For women, you have the category of women, and I'm saying increasing it because the usefulness of the smaller categorization doesn't have the same utility as the larger categorization. You can change words. We change words all the time. Words are simply there to be useful to us. That's we create words and we can decide how we define them. And I'm saying that my definition is better. And you're saying that your definition is correct simply because that's what the definition is. Or I've told correct. you multiple reasons as to why the definition of a female means a female based on science and our bodies. And on a so social standpoint, why there are differences between men and women, and that's why we call them men and women. And just because I or somebody else wakes up and they're like, I'm a man because I said I'm a man, that doesn't physically make them a man. That, that is, that's where the whole mental illness things come back in because we talked about that in the very beginning. We defined the gender dysphoria as a mental illness, which it is, just because you say something doesn't make it right and when we want to bring in the whole oh you believe this because you believe the world will be a happier place and i sit here and tell you some guy over here claiming he's a female doesn't make the world a happier place and it just we can't sit here and go over words and say that they can mean whatever they want to mean just because we feel a certain way inside our brains words mean what society decides the words mean that's literally what words are. Words are whatever we decide they mean. But you're claiming that the word girl or the word woman can just magically change based on how we feel as a society because a group yes. of people have decided words work. a group of people have decided that they don't like the way or the definition of girl and suddenly it just can't mean what it's supposed to mean and a, a has group meant of for the, like our entire lives. A, a Pluto for entire people's lives was a planet and a group of people decided that Pluto is no longer a planet because it being a planet is not useful. So they changed that the definition. change what it is.
Yes, it does. A Pluto is no longer a planet. Calling a trans woman a woman doesn't change the properties of a trans woman. This is simply categorization. I'm not saying that it's some magical thing that will change, will make a trans woman a cis woman. I'm not saying it's going to uh, biologically change uh, trans women's chromosomes. But I'm saying that because it's a categorization that we decide, that we can also decide to make that categorization include trans women. And I think that that's better because trans women being included in the women category makes them commit suicide less. So it doesn't. If we want to care about other people and we want to care about everybody's mental health and make sure people aren't killing themselves, then what what is your take on real women and the effects that these trans women are coming in and having on real women with trans women wanting to identify as women. If we can just change up words and make new words seem to fit whatever we want them to be, why can't trans women go find a new word to identify as? Why do they want to so badly claim to be a woman? If we're asking the question, what is a woman? Why do they want to be a woman so bad if we can't even define what a woman is? Although a woman is a human being that has biological differences from a man because there are only two differences and you either have a penis or you either have a vagina and there's literally nothing else other than that unless you end up with both, which the intersex people are the gray area that often gets either thrown into the argument or misconstrued. You quite literally only have the male reproductive organs and the female reproductive organs and with those being only two things, you're one or the other. And for trans women to want to come in and be like, oh, I'm a woman because I said so, that doesn't make them a woman based on how they feel. We've so been over this. You're talking about reproductive organs. Again, I could say, well, what if they have bottom surgery? Then they don't longer have those reproductive organs. And there, there, that there's still always biologically that. doesn't make them a woman. If I um, if, if I go turn my vagina inside out and make it a penis, that doesn't make me a I, man. At I would all. agree with you that to an extent that you can't fully change your biological sex. There there's sexual characteristics that decide sex, and you can turn change certain aspects of your sexual characteristics. I I'm I'm neutral in that argument. Whether you would consider um a trans woman, I I, I can understand the argument that some people make that a trans woman is partially female and partially male and i can also understand the argument that a trans woman is still a male but still a woman i can understand both those arguments but um that that's irrelevant to the point that sex and gender are different um i do agree that uh, chromosomes are real um penises are real um but gender it does not have to doesn't have to be correlated to those two things. Well, actually, gender, it, it, is, it is correlated. That right. I, I said that wrong. On a feeling. I said that wrong. It, it, it's correlated to those two things, but it doesn't have to be connected to those two things. So there's the correlation, but it doesn't have to be those two things because a penis isn't gender and um, a vagina isn't gender. Chromosomes aren't gender. Those are sexual characteristics. Gender is a social concept. There are two genders. There are literally two that we've had our entire lives. We have quite literally had male and female. Would you consider those genders? And it just, I mean, it you you can go off the rails when it comes to this because- yeah, Sure, why not? I, mean, I, I just think that people should be able to do what they want as long as they aren't um, hurting other people. And if people want to identify as a tractor, granted that is a straw man, no one actually identifies as a tractor. But I will take this point to the extreme. I'll identify um, as a tractor after okay, this. Okay, sure, sure. If the if you want to identify as a tractor, then I don't care. You can identify as a tractor, and if 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 you are still a functioning member of society and do everything that you need to do, you live a normal, happy life, and you just call yourself a tractor. I really do not care. It does not affect me. Um, and if that makes you happy, um, I will let that make you happy because I believe that people should be able to do what they want. And I believe that people, I, I think that people are perfect in deciding what makes them happiest. But I don't think that anyone else is better at deciding what makes someone happy than themselves. And even if other people were better at deciding what makes someone happy than themselves, the world works on incentives and people aren't incentivized to make other people happy. So even in a world where other people knew better for other people, I would still not like that because I don't think that people have incentives to um, make other people happy. But I also believe that people's um, self, that you're, you're, you're the best judge of what makes you happy is yourself, even if you're not perfect. Okay, so what I'm hearing is a lot of this is just based on emotions and wanting everybody to hold hands, stand in a circle, and sing kumbaya, and yeah. that's how we have a functioning society. Going back to, like, my main issue with 
allowing people to do whatever they want. I mean, why don't we allow people to murder people? Why don't we allow people to? We already talked about that. Mur groups? Murder is affecting someone else. Murder, er, murdering is, is directly affecting the victim by making so, them not alive anymore. They're okay, completely so ruining their happiness. Okay, so what if I go? What if I go break into Target down the street? That's not affecting anybody else. Yeah, but why don't we allow robberies to happen? Why yeah, can't I go rob a bank? Uh, breaking in the target is absolutely affecting the store I didn't owners. Hit, I didn't attack anybody, yes, so I'm not bothering it, it anybody. Absolutely affect. No, no, it, it's forcing the store owners to. Um, uh, it's forcing the people that work there to have to clean it up. It's um stealing from other people, so it makes it so that they um you're you're taking directly from someone else. Well, you were just talking about how there's you like transgenderism and you want it to be accepted there in is... society because you care and you want people to be happy, but in reality, the people that want to transition, everybody else in their life, regardless if they accept it or not, are not going to be happy. It doesn't make and it is affecting there's... other people. Okay, so then it's we directly simply directly affecting the people involved in We these, teach this those people life. to be more accepting so they aren't upset and they don't get their fee fees. Why should everybody else have to change and conform to one person's you're not changing. mental illness? What you're asking, so I'm not saying that you should send people to jail for miscorrect incorrectly gendering someone. I'm advocating for the fact that we should as a society try to strive towards making people accepting of other people's gender. I'm not talking about forcing anyone to do anything, but at that same extent, um, using someone's correct pronouns and calling, uh, it was specifically for trans women, um, take a trans woman using she, her pronouns and calling her a woman takes uh, essentially zero effort, but um, her not being accepted as a woman um, increases her suicide rates um, by three times. If, Encouraging um, her mental illness increases her suicide rates, according to the forty-one percent okay. that try to kill themselves. Because so you realize they either regret, they either they either grow up and they regret their decision, or they have just been so unhappy with themselves they try to find true happiness in changing their identity, when in reality they do not find happiness. So, so the the thing is, um, yeah, it, it trans if trans trans being trans is mental illness. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'll assume it is. Being trans and mental illness, um, mental illnesses have treatments, and the scientifically um, the scientifically understood treatment for um, having gender dysphoria, being trans, is social acceptance, social and sometimes medical transitioning. That is the scientific accepted treatment for that mental illness. So, and that is the treatment that has the best outcomes. So why are you advocating against treatment? It's sure it's a mental illness, but I'm advocating for a treatment for that mental illness. And you're trying to say, don't. Well, because the, the rates of these people going through with these transitions that are permanent and doing like self-harm to their own bodies, whether it's mutilation to their genitals or things like that, Removing the an rate of them regretting that decision when they reach like a comprehensive age to understand what they've just done is, is very high. Um, regretting. So I, again, we're not advocating for small children uh, transitioning, but if we're talking about adults, because you don't also you also don't think that trans adults are trans women. So if we're talking about adults here, to not bring that the the trans children issue into it, um, the regret rates are minuscule, and of their 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 tiny percentage of people end up detransitioning. It's 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 less than ten percent, but I think it's like one percent. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm hundred percent sure it's less than ten percent. Um, let's just, I think it's like 1%. And of that 1%, most of the people who deter and transition are people who say they're detransitioning because of social pressures. Most people that end up detransitioning don't detransition because they don't believe in their identity. It's because social pressures are forcing them to detransition. So the people who are unhappy, I think the level of unhappiness with um, trans um, surgeries or trans treatments is lower than pretty much any other surgery. So like the the uh, the like the people regret surgeries when they have a surgery. Like even if someone like removes a kidney, they might regret that kidney being removed, even if they needed to remove it. Um, and I think the regret percentage rate of trans surgeries is lower than the average surgery regret rate. With that, I'm trying to find the correlation between physically altering your body to change a chemical imbalance in your brain when that doesn't fix the root cause of so the, the, the problem. It's, it's not a with. chemical imbalance. The chemical imbalance theory has been pretty pretty disproven in psychology. But it, so it, then it's it, we, just a mindset 
we and it's not a mindset like a certain way so, so the thing about the brain is we, we don't know much about the brain like right we, we, we don't know a ton about the brain but whatever is happening they are mentally in that state and um the best way statistically to make this person live the most successful and happy life is to let them be who they want to be and um socially and sometimes medically affirm their gender is has the best outcomes so because i believe in doing the thing that has the best outcomes i believe in basically letting people transition if they want to and affirming trans women as being women well i do have a question for yes. you so let's take the the logic of letting people do what they want so it makes them happy how do you feel about the whole thing behind the minor attracted persons and pet you're, like you're the pedophiles minors. you're harming minors you're harming minors okay yeah so th th that but what I, if it makes the pedophiles happy i mean you want to claim the minor. A, a trans a trans woman transitioning is not uh is it could only be hurting themselves while um a uh, adult raping a child would be hurting nobody said anything about rape nobody um, well, said anything I, about rape. minor I, I, the, the 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 definition that they've chosen for calling a pedophile a minor attracted person is any adult is sleeping attracted. with a child is rape. I consider any adult sleeping with a child being raped. So nobody but. said anything about sleeping with them. Quite literally, just oh. the the fact that they're trying to be more accepted in society by claiming that they are attracted to minors, which is something we can both agree is wrong. I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just taking the same logic as so. I, I get they your think it's okay. They think that at the end of the day, them claiming that they're accepted more into society as attracted to children, they can go to bed happy at night. Where, um, where's the difference with that? So the, the difference is, so the end point, so the end point of a trans person is them transitioning. The end point of a, um, a minor attracted person would uh, being accepted would be them sleeping with minors. That would be the end point. Um, as in the case of people uh, have the mental illness where their, their uh, pedophiles exist, um, pedophiles that don't act on their actions exist. Um, they have that mental illness. It's a hard mental illness to deal with. Um, we should not accept um, them as like normal because their end point harms other people. But um, at the same time, we should advocate these people to go to treatment. There is a consensus that um, um, pedophiles, people that are attracted to minors, um, the best treatment for them is therapy. There's different treatments that you do. That's, there's scientifically accepted treatments for people like that. You can't completely get rid of it, but you can minimize any threat of harm or um, how much you think about it or whatever. There's there, there's treatments for it. And the same thing for trans people, there are treatments for it and the medically accepted treatment is transitioning. So the thing is that the end point hurts minors. Um, for trans people, if you think that it's self-harm, even then it's only hurting the trans person and not anyone else. That's the difference between it. So the endpoints hurt someone else while the other endpoint does not hurt someone else. So we shouldn't care if it doesn't hurt anybody else, but it's no them hurting themselves. I don't the think process. it's them hurting themselves, but again, I believe that people um, are best at deciding what's best for themselves. Even if they might hurt themselves, some people might hurt themselves, but I think that the person who is best at deciding what makes you happy is you. Um, unless you are in a um, completely like when when you are in at least a um stable state of mind unless unless if you're completely manic and completely like in a mental breakdown that's different then you're not making the best choice for you um but when people get trans surgeries they're not in a mid mental breakdown but other than that i believe that people are best at deciding what's for themselves even if they're not the perfect at it i just think that if we want to if we want to go the route of caring about other people and caring about happiness that we should help other people embrace who they are, who they were born to be, and who they are, and feel happy with that, not this ideology that they want to be somebody and else. Because that's argue, giving a false narrative of happiness. I would that's, agree with that, and I would argue that letting people be who they are is being trans. Um, right, but I, I do have one quick question for you. Do you yeah. do you believe that people should be able to um, do what they want, and that the person is um, a person's best decider of what makes yourself happy is you? Do you think that's, that's think how we should? Do you believe in like the libertarian mindset of letting people do what they want as long as it doesn't hurt someone else? I understand the libertarian mindset. I have a lot of friends who are libertarians. Um, but at the same time, there's rules and guidelines that we need to have a functioning society, which is why, I mean, there's other rules in other countries. And granted, we can 
talk about whether those are best or better or worse than the rules and guidelines in America. But there has to be a set of boundaries and rules that we need to function all together in a huge society. All right. So basically where it ends is basically I, uh, you believe that there is some people we should control some people's actions to make themselves do things that are better for themselves. Well, I believe that people should people's best for themselves is being able to do what they want as long as they don't harm others. I mean, if we live in a world where we're just letting every single person do whatever they want with no rules and standards, then that's just straight up. The rules and standards being don't hurt someone else. Of course, that those, I do still, think that those are the rules and standards. They're still hurting themselves. See, this is the part where we're going in circles. Okay, yeah. So I, I don't think they're hurting themselves. And even if they were, I think they should still be allowed to do it is basically what I'm saying.